and gentlemen, welcome aboard New York Jets News, hosted by Jude Jets, the best darn place for some Jets news. Enjoy your flight. What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to my New York Jets versus Miami Dolphins Week 6 game preview. I'm your host, Jude Jets. And before we get started, 80% of you who watch my videos are not subscribed, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. And without further ado, let's get started. The 0-5 New York Jets are traveling to Miami to face the 2-3 Dolphins. The Jets lost to the Cardinals 30-10 last week while the Miami Dolphins had an absolute dominant win against the 49ers, winning 43-17, taking a look at some injuries for this game. On the New York Jets side, Blessing and Austin is questionable, Makai Becton is doubtful, Quentin Williams is questionable, Darnold is doubtful, Perryman is questionable, Frank Lamar is questionable, and Alex Lewis is questionable. Makai Becton was limited in practice yesterday, so there's a chance he could play. Darnold was listed out on Wednesday, so it doesn't make sense why he's doubtful here, but don't expect Donald to even get a snap. And Bashad Perryman looks like he's going to play. They've been talking very highly in the press conference, and Perryman said he's excited to get back on the field. So all signs are indicating that Perryman will get to play this game. Looking at the Miami Dolphins, injuries, Shaq Lawson is questionable, Kyle Van Noy is questionable, and German Smythe is questionable. According to ESPN's matchup predictor, they have the Dolphins with a 73% chance to win this game, while the Jets have a 26% chance to win this game. And there's a 0.2% chance that there's a tie. How can the New York Jets defense stop this Miami Dolphins offense? One thing the Dolphins love to do is pass the ball. Fitzpatrick having 13,000 passing yards so far in the season and having 350 in last week's game. The Jets have a horrible secondary, so it's going to be tough stopping this Miami Dolphins pass attack. One thing the New York Jets are going to have to rely heavily on is our pass rush, which has not been very good this season. John Frank Lamar's Quinton Williams and Steve McClendon are just going to have to step it up this week and force pressure on Fitzpatrick to make him make those mistakes. Whenever Fitzpatrick is under pressure, he throws a lot of interception and ends and makes a ton of mistakes. In the run game, the New York Jets don't have to worry about much. Miles Gaskin, who was supposed to be their third string running back so far this season, is now their leading rusher with 249 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, and a touchdown. They're not, they're not a running team. They're solely a pass team, so the Jets aren't going to have to worry about much in that run factor. But if they do decide to run it a lot with Moss Gaskin, the Jets are going to do a pretty good job in covering them. Even though we've let up so many big-time plays, like Mostert's 80-yard touchdown run, that 47-yard Melvin Gordon run, the Jets have a pretty solid run defense. We're one of the best in the NFL currently right now, even though those crazy plays happened. So the name of the game is just to force pressure on Fitzpatrick and contain those wide receivers. Sam Darnold is out for the second straight game with a shoulder injury, so Joe Flacco will get the start. In last week's game, Flacco had 195 yards and one touchdown. 116 of those yards came from wide receiver Jamison Crowder. The name of the game is to throw it to Crowder. I don't think the Miami Dolphins are going to be able to stop Crowder just like many teams haven't been able to stop him. If we can get the ball into Crowder's hands, he can do his magic and he can score points for the New York Jets. We also are getting Bashad Perriman back a much needed deep threat on the outside. If he can get involved, if he can, you know, do some stuff like Robbie Anderson, the Jets could be in a good position to score some points on offense, something we have not done this entire season. The Jets can get open receivers. If we can, Flacco can make throws. We can be in a good position to win this game. The New York Jets, I don't think they're going to rely heavily on the run game this week. Well, they shouldn't, but we're probably going to hand it off to Gore 30 times. Gase did say he's going to get Perrine, the rookie, more involved, which is something we need to see. He's one of the only players on this Jets offense that can do explosive plays. We saw in the first scrimmage, he had that like 60-something yard, 70-something yard touchdown. Three keys to victory for the New York Jets this week. Number one, force Fitzpatrick into pressure. When Fitzpatrick is forced into pressure, he's most likely going to throw those interceptions. Number two, hand the ball off to Michael P. Ryan. Last week, the Miami Dolphins gave but 90 yards to an explosive playmaker in Raheem Mostert. P. Ryan is very explosive, so he's going to have a good game if you hand the ball to him. Throw it to Crowder. Crowder's the best slot receiver in the NFL. That's all I have to say. And those are my three keys to victory for this week. Who do I have winning this game? The Miami Dolphins. Even though the Dolphins and Fitzpatrick have a record of losing games they should have won, the New York Jets are really bad this season. 
I mean, we probably would lose to the 0-16 Cleveland Browns in the 0-16 Detroit Lions. I mean, we're just that bad. My final score for this game, Miami 27 and YJ 13. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you like what you saw or heard in today's video, make sure to subscribe because I post content like this every single day. Thanks for watching, and as always, go Jets. Peace.